Could RFK Jr. trigger an electoral tie? Yes. In this case, both Trump and Harris would each receive 269 electoral votes. Now, this scenario is possible even if just candidates from the two major parties are running. But add in third-party candidates, and you have even more of a shot. Granted, there's only a 1 in 300 chance that neither Trump or Harris receive the necessary 270 electoral votes, but it is possible. Now, in regards to RFK Jr., did his dropping out and endorsing Trump shift enough votes in enough states that they swing in directions political scientists can't even see yet? There are four scenarios in which Trump and Harris tie. These odds are pretty small. One in a thousand, one in twelve hundred, one in six hundred, one in two thousand. But still, if RFK ruffled enough feathers in enough states and can mess up the spread, it could happen. If RFK Jr. hadn't dropped out of the race and stayed on the ballot in either Maine or Nebraska, him causing a tie would be a much more likely scenario. That's because those states divvy up their electoral votes proportionally, meaning a candidate could win a single electoral vote. Now, just because RFK Jr. can't do that, since he's not on the ballot in those states anymore, it doesn't mean another third-party candidate can't, like Chase Oliver, the Libertarian candidate, or Jill Stein, the Green Party candidate. If either of them can score just one electoral vote in Maine or Nebraska and force a 269 to 269 tie, then, my friends, we have what's called a contingent election. And this is when things get real interesting real fast. If this happens, the House of Representatives will then decide the outcome of the election. Each state delegation gets to cast one vote for president. A candidate needs to win a majority, or 26, of these state delegations to become president. The vice president is then decided by the Senate. Each senator has one vote, and a majority, 51 votes, is needed to win the vice presidency. Now, if the House of Representatives can't reach a majority by the inauguration, the vice president-elect will become president until the House elects a president. If the Senate also fails to elect a vice president, then the Presidential Succession Act will come into effect. The Speaker of the House would become the president until a president or vice president is determined by the House and Senate. For example... Let's just say election day is over. There is a tie between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. The Senate has voted and decided that Governor Tim Walz is vice president-elect. However, the House of Representatives has still not figured out who to select as president. On January 20th, Inauguration Day, there is still no decision. In this case, Vice President Tim Walz would serve as president until one was selected in the House. Now, let's say, for example, neither the House nor the Senate can determine who should be president or vice president. January 20th, Inauguration Day, arrives. Who will become president until a decision is made? According to the Presidential Succession Act, the Speaker of the House would become president. That would be Mike Johnson. He would remain in power until the House or Senate could figure out who really was elected president or vice president. Now that you know where we've been, find out where we're going. Tune in to Ladies Love Politics, where you can stay informed without going insane.